and I basically stalled out my wing and then yeah. I tipped forward and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going in. And that and going in means I'm going into the ground. This is Ruckus Makers, a show about entrepreneurs where the mission matters and the status quo isn't an option. I'm your host, Zach Reiner, and in today's episode, we're talking with Miles Dasher, an adrenaline junkie who's built a career and a sport out of looking death in the face and taking the leap. So how, how'd you get into this? Like... Base jumping? I kind of yeah. fell into it. Like literally? Yeah. Ha! <laughs> That's my go-to. But uh, no, I... I um, when I was a kid, I saw some skydivers and I was playing soccer and this guy skydived and he landed in our soccer field and it blew my mind. And I was like, what is, how did I, I want to do that? You know, that's just yeah. cool. And so, um, in college I started bungee jumping. My roommate, um, invited a friend over my roommate, Christian Arden. He invited over, uh, Jim Fritch who owned primal instinct bungee jumping company and he was just cruising through Chico College campus and um, recruiting bungee jumpers for the midnight jump at the train bridge in the middle of the night, you know, it wasn't technically legal. So we uh, yeah. just kind of would go out and, at nighttime and on full moons and set up bungee jumps on bridges and jump off of them. And then from there, I graduated college uh, to be a PE teacher and somehow the directions got uh, you know, askew and I didn't quite, you know, settle down into a school system. I went to, uh, Squaw Valley, USA to, um, go ski for a year. Now it's called Palisades Tahoe. And, um, I went there just to go ski for a year and ended up living there 11 and a half years. And while I was there, um, Jim Fritch was living there and I moved into the house with him, team primal, primal instinct, bungee mm -hmm. jumping. And we would go bungee jumping on the full moons and, uh, I worked all, all kinds of just numerous jobs and just to keep myself there and get a ski pass and just ski. Yeah. And I'm like, this is so fun. I'm going to stay here forever. It's awesome. And, um, and while I was there skiing and bungee jumping, our roommate, Frank and Bali, who lived back in the, we, he didn't even live in a room. He lived in a sauna, you know, cause that's how it is at ski towns, you know, sure, like yeah. some guy lived under the closet, that kind of thing. And, you know, I split the room, um, upstairs and eventually graduated into the loft. But, uh, but yeah, Frank Gambali lived in the sauna at the Primal House, and he was a skydiver base jumper guy. And um, he was really quiet. He kept to himself. So it took me a while to, um, you know, get him to break and just kind of open up to me. And um, next thing you know, I'm like, where do you go skydiving? How do we do this, man? I wanted, I've always wanted to. Yeah. And I was 25 years old, and Frank's like, do you have a credit card? And I said, yes. Well, then here we go. Let's go to Davis, California. And uh, we went to skydance, skydiving. And it was September 6th, 1995, made my first jump. Okay. And from that first moment I stepped out of the airplane, it was just hook, line, and sinker, man. I was just like, yeah. this is awesome. This is what I want to do. I got to get a job sweeping the floors and figure out how to grow from there, you know? Yeah. And what was then, going through your head before that first jump? Before the first jump, I yeah. was just like, okay, all these things that they say. Well, you do eight hours of ground school. Right. So you're in this classroom and you're just talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. And like eight hours is like up and I'm like, and there are any questions and somebody asks some stupid question, well, what did you do with this? I'm like, are you not paying attention? You know? And then like, and then, okay, any other questions? And then another silly question. What if this? I'm like, you're not, you know, guys aren't paying attention, you know? And then it's like another, any more questions? I'm like, yeah. Can we jump now? Yeah. I thought you would never ask you yeah. first. I'm like, yes. So, um, yeah. Uh, I got to go for a jump that evening and, um, but during the class, you're just paying attention and like figuring out what to do. Cause once you're basically jumping out accelerated free fall style with two instructors holding onto you on either side. Right. And, and it's not tandem. You're not strapped nope, to someone. It's nope. They recommend yeah. going tandems. I go, that's cool, but I want to do an AFF course, you know, accelerated free fall without a tandem. And they go, yeah, but we recommend that. I'm all, I appreciate the recommendation, but here we go. Once again, I'm just going to do the AFF if that's cool. If that's, if that's, okay to do and they go that is okay to do so i signed up for the aff and wow. just started going solo by myself and then uh i didn't do get into tandems until about um three years later once i figured out um that that because i was packing parachutes at the drop zone you know um for a couple of years 
And then I started doing tandems and then I was getting paid to skydive, not prepare for skydive, you know? Yeah. And, um, that was my intro to becoming an instructor in, in the skydiving world. And, uh, but yeah, that first jump was just, um, it just changed my life. It was just like, this is the coolest thing going. And, uh, yeah, I want to figure out how to just keep doing this. And you're 25, 25 years old. Yeah. yeah. And I was, um, I was working odd jobs. I was building a house, the labor on a, um, a construction crew. And then I graduated it, um, the next year to doing landscape construction for a company called rare earth out of Truckee. And then, um, and then I was getting paid pretty good and operating machinery and it was pretty awesome. And I was digging it. And that was kind of helped me out, get into gear and, and purchase my first like skydiving setup so that I'm not renting gear from the drop zone and I have my own parachute. And then, uh, and then I even bought another setup where I downsized my parachute from like mm -hmm. a really big, um, uh, 170, I downsized to a 135 okay. and, um, and now I fly a 120 when I'm wingsuiting and that kind of thing. Cause it's the right size for that. But, uh, while I was skydiving and Frank was telling me, you know, how the sport works and we're going to free fly after my 11th jump, we're not going to fall on our bellies anymore. We're going to go head down or sit fly. We're going vertical style, which is a lot faster. And as opposed to doing 120 miles an hour on your belly, you're doing a buck 80, yeah. um, 160 to 180 miles an hour straight down. And, um, the fastest I've gone was 260 with a rubber suit and just straight down without wiggling or moving and just hold it straight and just build speed the whole time. But, um, normally when we're free flying, we're doing about 160 miles an hour. Yeah. At least that's the, um, what our, um, audible altimeters do. They, mm -hmm. uh, they have these settings. You could read, um, what's your speed and that kind of thing. Um, downward speed. And we've got a ball that falls. It's, it's a, it's a tennis ball. And we fill it full of lead shot. And then we put a string on the end about this big. It's made out of webbing, a little bit of wide string, mm -hmm. a pull-up board. And then we cut the string to like the speed that we want. And uh, sometimes you cut it too short. You got to sew on a piece and then cut that down. And um, our ball was like 164 miles an hour. It was like super sweet speed Okay, for doing tricks and flying around it and grabbing it and throwing it back and forth to each other and yeah. free flying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's nuts. I, my wife and I joke all the time. Uh, she wants to go skydiving. I've never gone skydiving. Yep. And I, I I don't know if I got the guts to, to do skydiving because, I, yeah. I mean, if something goes wrong. That's that's not a good day. Yeah, but there's a backup parachute skydiving. You yeah. know, base jumping is where you have a single parachute system. But skydiving, you have a main parachute mm -hmm. and a reserve, a backup. There you go. And um, so, yeah, if the main parachute's messed up, then you pull the reserve. You know, you cut it away. Ching. It goes um, flinging away. Right. And then... Uh, and floats down to the ground and then you pull your reserve and then that's a parachute that's packed by a certified rigger with the FAA. Mm -hmm. So that thing is packed like a base rig, basically. Actually, base rigs are packed like skydiving reserves. There you but, go. Uh, but yeah, that's um, when I, I went and learned how to pack reserves to help out my base jumping game. While I was packing parachutes for money, um, I started, um, I was living in a tent for a couple of years. <laughs> um, I, I quit the landscape construction job and um and moved to the drop zone and basically lived in a tent for two years and was packing parachutes and everything was to me was in terms of uh jump tickets and um pack jobs you know five bucks a pack job 15 bucks a jump ticket you know yeah. so get busy you know and uh and then working at the drop zone i got a special deal of ten dollars a a jump, which is kind of unheard of because now it's like $25 a jump now and the kind of rates have gone up with gas prices. But, uh, but yeah, it, everything to me, you know, like, like food was just secondary. Like, yeah, I'll yeah. eat when I'm done jumping and then I'll pack a couple parachutes and go buy some food. But yeah. right now I'm, I'm getting jump tickets, you know, that was your and, life. Uh, that's that what, that's it. what you wanted. That was it. You know? And, uh, I think I made like $9,000 that year, but I was living like a King just got out of my brains out. And like, um, and during that time when I was a packer, we hired the King Air that we used to skydive out of. And we all we all kicked in a hundred bucks. I think there was 10 of us. And um, the pilot flew for free and we flew here to Twin Falls. And you know, our friend, my friend Donna Reed said, You gotta go to Twin Falls. It's this bridge. Cause because when we were base jumping in California, it wasn't legal. 
we would have to go sneak around on a bridge right. in the middle of the night, you know, on a full moon so you could see the landing area or have a guy in the landing area with a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, you hope you it's know. lit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have a flashlight guy lighting up the landing area and lighting up himself so you could see the perspective of how tall someone is and then, and then lighting up the landing area again and then himself again and then, all right, coming in and land. And, and we couldn't shoot video of it, you know, of any of our jumps. And to me, graduating college to be a PE teacher – learning that reciprocal feedback is the number one source of learning motor skill development, you know, yeah. is, is like watching yourself do something, you know, like if you can get video of yourself playing volleyball, you yeah. can figure out, oh man, I keep dropping my shoulder. Oh man, I don't, yep. don't straighten my back enough, you know, and then you see yourself do that and you know what to correct. Mm -hmm. And then um, next thing you know, you just up your game and your, your, you know, your motor skill development just takes off. But Jumping in nighttime didn't work. So we all hired the plane, 100 bucks each, flew out to Twin Falls, landed at um, Joslin Airport, uh, ran at a van, jammed out, stopped and grabbed a cheeseburger on the way at Wendy's. And then, um, you know, hey, stop here really quick. I'm starving. Okay, let's go. Now we can jump all day. And then um, we jammed down to the bridge and we stayed at the Comfort Inn. Where else should we check into the hotel? Let's go just check out the bridge first. That's what we're here for, not to sleep. Yeah. So we went to the bridge and... Um, we get there and boom, I immediately open up the trunk, grab my rig, check everything, put it on. Everyone's walking out to look at the bridge to take a peek <laughs> at it. Jump. And now here I go running right past them, you know, like, woo, look down. I'm like, God, this is awesome. You know, yeah. and uh, we've already talked about it on the way out. And it's, you know, it's almost 500 feet, 486 feet. I'm like, that's sweet. That works. You know, I've jumped plenty of things a lot lower than that. And, uh, oh, it's just beautiful. It was a beautiful day, light winds out of the West. And, um, the beach, like where we land, mm -hmm. well, now the beach is all full of grass and the trees are growing down there, um, on that, like right up next to the water. But when we first came here in, in 99, it was all sand, just all the way. It was like the whole side of the river. It looked wow. like Hawaii, like a beach. That's what I call it, the beach. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I went for it. And, um, it was before I could do any tricks. I was just doing just flat and stable, you know, pull open on heading. Yes. Get your brakes cruising and land Woohoo! stuff it in the bag. And then, okay, that looks like the trail going out. So just follow that. And I hiked up and grabbed, I had brought two rigs. I borrowed one from Frank and then, uh, and then, so I got back to the top and everyone was just grabbing their stuff for their first jump. And then, um, so I went out and made my second one with them. It, but we spent um, the weekend here in Twin Falls. And how old were like, you at this time? Oh, gosh. That was 99. I was born in 69. 30 years old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had a, yeah, yeah, no, you're good. That's yeah. great. That's great. <laughs> 30 years old. Okay. So you've yep. been jumping for five years and, yep. and you heard about Twin Falls. So you came to Twin Falls from a friend and yep. you're jumping. Exactly. Yeah. And we did two plane trips a year to come out here and figured out that it's only a seven hour drive from Tahoe. So um, then made a car trip as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, just loving it. And I was, my plan was to move out here when I met my wife now, um, Nikki, when she moved to Tahoe. And Nikki, I remember when she walked in the first time she walked down the stairs and into this house that I was couch surfing at and she was renting a room there. And, uh, and you know, I was like, what's your name? I'm Nikki. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Twin Falls. I'm like, oh, I'm moving there. And yeah. then she was like, uh-oh, crazy stalker guy. Look out. That's funny. She's right. Cause now we got kids and here we are in Twin Falls. But, um, <laughs> no, I was planning on moving to twin okay. because of the bridge and mm -hmm. for training, you know, and get my jump on. Cause, um, at bungee jumping was cool. Skydiving was awesome, but nothing beats base jumping to me. It's yeah. the most fun you can possibly have. You know, what's, what's the, di so, the difference, obviously, is you're you're jumping from a bridge versus a plane, right? Yeah. But isn't a object, isn't yeah. uh, skydiving a lot longer? Isn't it a longer experience oh, yeah. versus like a base jump is like fifteen seconds or something like yeah. that? Yep, fifteen twenty seconds exactly off the bridge here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, skydiving, you'll sit on a plane for twenty minutes going up to altitude, and it's just like a comforting feeling. Listen to the engine hum, just yeah. It's like being in the womb, and then you get to the top. You got a bird's eye view of everything, and then you free fall for a minute, and then you, um, and then you open your parachute and fly for about another minute or two to come in and land. And yeah, you're right. Base jumping here in Idaho, it's quick. It's, um, it's you know, you jump, you pull in two seconds, you open in four seconds, and you're on the ground in 25. Mm -hmm. And 
and it's um you got to repack your parachute which takes a lot longer like a skydiving pack job is five minutes and a base jumping pack job is 15 minutes when you're fast you know and yeah. uh and then um after you jump you've got to hike out of the canyon almost 500 feet as well and uh yeah so there's a lot more work um physically per per jump to mm-hmm. do but it's also a lot less expensive you're not paying 15 to 25 dollars a jump now you know yeah and in, in like here i'll do three jumps in a morning i could do those in an hour without packing because we we have a new style where we just uh, ju- unpack jumps where you just throw the parachute up into the air right bang it opens it. and you get a lot of canopy skills on that you know you get um an extra five seconds of canopy time so you're 25 seconds to land yeah and that's even with floating out floating out and then diving it at the ground and hooking it in with a bunch of speed and then swooping it in, you know? And, um, so yeah, you could do, I could bang out three jumps in an hour, you know, take the kids to school, drop them off, jam out to the bridge, boom, 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 get, um, three jumps and head back home and, you know, get up my chores on all day. Yeah. Do stuff before I pick up the kids again. And then it's sunset time. Oh, time to go back to the bridge. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what, a, what an interesting life. Uh, yeah. not many people like wake up every day and think I want to go jump off a bridge. Yeah. Like every day. Maybe right? not in the way yeah. we're thinking yeah. about not it. In the, not in the, yeah. in, the, in the fun way. Um, yeah. where does that come from? Like were you, when, when you were a kid, were you the guy that would build like bike ramps oh, yeah. and see how high you can go? Like, yeah. Tell me about or that. how many bikes you can jump. You yeah. Know? Yeah. We used to set, we used to build ramps on the sidewalk. And then um, we weren't even wearing helmets. Actually, that's wrong. We were wearing football helmets back then because that was the only helmet we had. And we would set up, hey, could bring your bikes. We want to like see how many bikes I could jump because Evil Knievel, man, he was a hero to us. Yeah. And we would like see him jumping over buses. And I'm like, I'm going to jump bikes, you know. So we lay down on all these bikes. We lay them down because standing up is too high. Yeah. You know, you lay them down and like clear, like I've done like eight bikes, you know, woohoo, new new. Like, uh, what is that? Neighborhood record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And, uh, yeah, um, I was always doing climbing, at, you know, tree houses, making slides out of tree houses. You use, like, you know those boards that you use for, um, like, a, uh, oh, gosh, the um, when you build all the walls and then you put, what is it called? When you put it on top of the walls to hold up the ceiling. Oh, gosh, can't remember the name yeah, of those, I don't know. Those, those, those boards. But if you turn them sideways, they make a sweet slide. Okay. And, and we got to, um, on our treehouse when I was a kid, we got to grab some stuff from construction companies who were like, oh, we're done with this house. You right, yeah, scrap. Grab anything from that pile right there is yours. We're like, this big one? They're all, yeah, that's our slide. You know, and so yep. we would build tree houses and, and monkey bridges. I was a Boy Scout. And we learned how to um, make monkey bridges where you stand on one rope and hold on to two and you could walk across trees and they're kind of connected so they don't come apart yeah. too far. And um, yeah, I had like five monkey bridges in my tree. I had a net we could jump into and, and land wow. in, practice being a stuntman. There's a movie, Hooper, that I was just like used to watch over and over. And it was about stuntmen. It was Burt Reynolds. Yeah. And uh, I always wanted to be a stuntman. And um, yeah, I just we would jump big wheels down the three hills like the first one's steep and then it's a flat and then it drops and that's where you take off and then you land on the transition just before you get to the flat yeah and we would launch that thing and send it for everything it was worth on the three hills on big wheels and then we started doing it on bikes but then that was getting too dangerous because you can go too fast and make it to the flat we found yeah. that once clear it yeah robbie brown he found that out in the hard way <laughs> Okay, or Robbie. Big meals. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. Felt so bad for that kid. Broke his collarbone. And, uh, yep. So, yeah, just um, we were always doing um, stunts ourselves, like jumping off the roof yeah. of a house for fun. And, like, where were your parents? Yeah. Like, were they encouraging or were they like, yeah, have fun? You know, they're like, go outside and play was the best advice I ever got from my mom. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, my dad's working, you know, he's a pilot in the Air Force. So he's um, working a lot, you know, and, and but when he comes home, we'll go play racquetball or um, go to the pool. I always spend a lot of time at the pool. OK. And uh, diving boards was my jam. Yeah. And uh, seems, yeah. seems about right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, took judo, learn how to fall and, and like like hit the ground hard and like but be OK. And then yeah. spent like summer after summer at the pool, jumping off the high dive, 
and practicing tricks where wild Willie, he would do these like super diving tricks where like one and a half off the high dive to me, it was like, Oh, mine's blown. I'm going to try yeah. that. Well, bam, come up short for the belly flop, <laughs> do it again. Well, bam, come up short for the belly flop, cry for a little bit, go back up in there and then stick it and like, yeah. And then just do it over and over and over and over for like yeah. weeks. Yeah. And, so uh, what, what drives you to like, keep going? I uh, just trying to figure out what's, what's cool, what's new. And, and basically when I'm flying my body in the air under a parachute, I can't find anything that beats it really. You know, I just yeah. love it. And being able to jump off the bridge and have a parachute catch you instead of belly flop into the water <laughs> or hit the ground, you know, yeah. it's, um, you can do tricks in the air that you can't do into a pool because I don't know. Yeah. Actually you take all the tricks you could do into the pool and then you can take them to the bridge right. and do them into a parachute and then land the parachute. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's, I just, I call it having more fun than people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, like it, it's a special, it's a special gift you have, right? The love for, for falling through the air, flying yeah. through the air. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You believe humans can fly, right? Yeah. That's, that's a thing that, can. that, yeah. that oh, is yeah. true for you. Yep. And, and yeah. that's, and, and, uh, many people don't relate to that. So it's yeah. really interesting growing up here, uh, seeing base jumpers off the bridge. It, it's just part of twin falls. It's part yeah. of the culture here, which is really where it's, it's, it's a blessing. It's awesome. Um, I love that about twin. It's just a normal yeah. thing, and everyone's like, "Beep beep, hey guys!" Yeah, as you drive yeah, by, like, yeah. hey, as people jump in, yeah. it's like it's normal. It's which exactly. is crazy. Uh, I want to talk about something that you do that my wife always mentions, and that's paramotoring all over the canyon. Yep, that is that is awesome. Tell me about that. That's what I would be doing right now if I wasn't right here, because right now the winds are really calm, and it okay. takes a certain special time. And um, we're just lucky right now that there's the the winds are really calm. Normally, paramotoring. You want a little bit of wind so it's easy to pick your wing up yeah. into the wind. Like paragliding is you have a giant wing. It's like yeah. three times as wide as your base rig, but it's not as um, like that's the span. And then the cord front to back is kind of half the size. So it's just a big wide wing that's skinny compared to a, a square wing that's a um, parachute for mm -hmm. base jumping and skydiving. And basically – you got to run and pull the wing up or have wind to hold inflate it up. Yeah. the wing and then hold it up over your head. And um, like seven miles an hour is like whoosh, pulls the wing up and it almost lifts you off the ground with seven miles an hour. And yeah. um, when you put this big giant backpack on, it's a it's basically a lawnmower motor yeah. that's got a three to one reducer that goes through a propeller and it's got a cage to keep everything out of the propeller. Cause if you reach back and stick your finger in the propeller, it'll chop it right off. Like yeah. gone. And, um, it's like, yeah, turning your lawnmower sideways on your back yeah, that's and what it looks pushing like. the air. It's exactly what it is, you know, and carbon fiber, um, propellers. And, um, yeah, the, the paramotor business has, um, gotten quite um what's that called competitive and the paramotors are have just been getting better and better and better the technology is amazing right now for parachutes and paramotors that's cool and uh the motors are getting lighter and lighter like i have a 70 pound beast right now that i'm flying around because i broke my lightweight one and i'm about to replace that one because i have to yeah because like when you have a um a 50 pound motor compared to a 70 pound motor that gives out almost twice as much power <laughs> you do the math. It's like, oh my gosh, it's, I, I can't give you the, the numbers of thrust that it gives you, but if it basically, if you're standing there and you full, go full throttle with your um, paramotor, it should want to knock you on your face. You know, yeah. you gotta like, like hold yourself up and not let it shove you forward. And, um, and you put a wing on your back, you lay that on the ground and you pull the front risers and you start running and that wing comes up over your head and then you give throttle and then boom, you're and now <laughs> the wing is lifting you up off your feet, like lifting the motor off your back. And now you're just running in the middle. And then all of a sudden the ground goes away because you're going, the parrot motor so strong that it pushes you forward and gives you thrust, giving you lift on your wing. Yeah. And then you're up in the sky and you could, you can take those things legally to 18,000 feet and just go play around if, as long as you're not in like class B airspace or military yeah. zone or something like that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's so fun. It's, um, my, my buddy, John DeVore from Red Bull, he calls it like, Oh, that's your retirement sport right there. You know, cause it's a lot slower than yeah. skydiving. It's not as fast paced and everything, you know? And, um, how are you going to get a job doing that? Cause like we got, that's 
what I do with the Red Bull Air Force is we right. do skydiving demonstrations and base jumping demonstrations. It's high impact and wow factors like, whoa, whoa, coming in fast, like 70 miles an hour across the ground, you know? And then yeah. paramotor is like, brah, 15, 20 miles an hour, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. But it's super awesome because you can put some music in, listen to a football game or baseball game and like, and um, jam around and, and go up to 18,000 feet. Normally you want to stay lower because it's cooler to be close to the ground and play with things like the canyon. Yeah, the canyon or the bridge. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, the Snake River Canyon. Yeah, just lucky to live here and be here. You know, yeah. I love this place. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I got a, my backyard is pretty much a runway to take off, except for my old motor doesn't really quite have the thrust and you got to watch out for the power lines. So <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for a little bit of wind just so I can clear those bad boys or I'll have to um, go out to like Sunway and mm -hmm. lay out there when the kids aren't playing soccer and then take off and land, you know? Yeah. And um, those soccer fields are usually never totally busy. Even when they are playing soccer, there's always an open space where um, Sean Chuma and I and um, Kyle Miller and and um, there's a couple other people in town. There's not really – there's only a couple handfuls of people, like a handful of, of guys yeah. that I know that fly on the regular here in town. And when it when there's no wind, that's when we go. That's when it's hardest to take off and land because yeah. you don't have wind to help your wing inflate and you have to run when you land. You can't just like stall the wing out to no forward speed. Mm -hmm. You're still doing seven miles an hour and you got to like run that out and shut down the motor and then shut down the wing. And then you got yeah. 70 pounds on your back. You know? Yeah, and, it's tiring. You know, that's yeah. hard. Yeah, but when you, as soon as you take off, like that part's hard where you got a 70 pound backpack and you're lifting your risers and you're pushing and you're running and you're going and then you throttle. And then once it picks you up, then you're sitting in a chair. And the hardest part is keeping your arms above your head for, you know, an hour or two because you've got a two hour tank um, yeah. of fuel. You can fly for two hours. And I usually go for an hour flight. I'll go an hour before um, it gets dark and then, or before the sunset. And then I'll fly around. And the, after the sunset, it's kind of tricky because it can last almost an hour here. You know yeah. what I mean? It's got long yeah. sunsets here. And, um, and, and you know, that's why I do that. Um, so that I don't run out of fuel. Like I use a light as a fuel gauge for me Yeah, and it helps out. Cause yeah, you can't tanks really behind you tank. as I say. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just like look at your tank, you know, it's like, it's yeah. not just right there. You can get a, a little mirror, then you got to put can. it in a pocket and zip it up. You don't want to let it. anything go and go into the propeller and ting, 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 break that, your prop. That'd be a bad day. Let's get expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, you're obviously a part of the Air Force, the the Red Bull Air Force. Yep. Uh, how did you get connected to that? Because if you're 30 years old, you're jumping off bridges all the time. Yep. You're working. You're paying the bills, but you're just trying to jump off bridges, right? So how did you get connected? We to created them? the Red Bull Air Force. Really? It was yeah. It was um, at Sky Lake Tahoe, um, hanging out. There was Charles Bryan, um, John Devore, and Mike Vale, and they were the three Red Bull skydiver guys, and. Um, and I would go out there and pack parachutes and live. And that's that was my hangout. That's all I did was go skydive and hang out with those guys. And um, Shane McConkey was a Red Bull skier at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and Frank and Bali, he was the Red Bull base jumper. And he was also a skydiver. And um, when Frank passed, he was in Yosemite. He jumped off of uh, the west face of El Capitan wow. and landed. And somebody had tipped off the Rangers because they had made a, a anti-air delivery rule. So you couldn't mm. like fly parachutes off the um, mountains. You could still paraglide and hang glide, but you can't base jump. They made an anti-base jumping rule because a couple of bad apples spoiled the whole game there, you know? Bummer. And uh, it happens in some sports. But uh, – so when Frank died, um, I kind of stepped up and got put into a position where um, we went on a trip to Baffin Island and um, and Shane invited me with Charles and Mike and um, Felix Baumgartner, who's like the, the original Red Bull parachute guy from mm -hmm. Austria and uh, like one of the first Red Bull athletes ever. And the um, five of us went to Baffin Island and jumped. And I got to, um, I got to just bro down with all the Red Bull guys and I wasn't on the Red Bull team or anything, yeah. but when I came back, um, I got a phone call and they said, Hey, we like the way you interview and you got cool style and good stunts. I had lightning bolt sideburns. Ah, you know, there you go. Cool. I used to have hair back then too. Yeah. Long <laughs> blonde hair. I was like a troll doll, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, but, funny. um, but yeah, I, uh, 
I went so fast that it all fell out. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, um, they gave me a job. It was more like an internship for the first couple of years where they would pay for me to go to places and, um, and then cover like my gas and, and rental car and everything and, and plane ticket. And then I would, um, basically get paid to go jump out of paragliders or go jump off of a cliff somewhere. Yeah. And, um, and my friends are like, you know what that means? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing what I love and I get to do it more. And they're like, no, you're on rebel. I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means. But then, uh, yeah, over the years where we started doing more and more stuff and like, oh my gosh, we just, we started, we started doing demonstration jumps into like Donner Lake yeah. for new year or for uh 4th of July. And at first we just started doing it on our own and, um, no one was paying us. We were paying to, for the plane and everything. And I was doing ground crew for the team where they go jump in and I have cold beers waiting for the guys when they <laughs> land. And then I get their parachutes all dry and Hey, these guys want to feed you over here at the, at the, all the food um, venues, you know? And so they go over there and start eating and I'm drying their parachutes and I pack their stuff. And then after a few beers, I'm like, I'll give you guys a ride home. You don't need to be driving. And then plus you don't even have a car here. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah. and so I deliver them home so they can go to their 4th of July ideal with their families and stuff with their pack parachutes. And they were like, miles this is the best ground crew ever. And I started out as the ground crew guy. And then, um, and we did, um, like four or five demos a year just for fun on our own. Yeah. And then next thing you know, we started getting hired to do these demos. And then, um, it started turning into a job for us. And now, oh my gosh, I do like 14, 15 demos a year. Wow. And, um, that's just me as a team where, you know, there's, there's nine of us and we usually put like two people here, two people there on the same weekend. Mm -hmm. And then some weekends we've got like an air show where we bring four people together. And, um, and our, our Red Bull Air Force team consists of for our air shows is four jumpers, um, a helicopter pilot and Kirby Chambliss, the, um, the upside down, he flies the edge 540. He's right. the um, world champion and in, in flying the stunt plane. And he's also won the Red Bull Air Race a few times, two times, wow. um, uh, yearly Red Bull Air Race champion. And um, and Aaron Fitzgerald, he flies our Red Bull helicopter. He not only takes us to altitude and kicks us out, but if we're good and we close the door and make sure the handle shut, <laughs> he can get upside down in that helicopter. Wow. He does backflips, barrel rolls. He'll do um, what are those things? Oh gosh, can't even remember the name of him. He's got yeah. like a whole repertoire of, of moves that he does. He puts on a whole show, and then Kirby flies with him and does loops with him and barrel rolls side by side. But then Kirby does barrel rolls around him while he's doing barrel rolls. And 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 yeah. when we get out of the helicopter with our wingsuits and we're flying down the flight line, say at Oshkosh or somewhere really cool. Kirby's doing barrel rolls around us in our wingsuits as we come down. And, um, yeah, we've been putting on shows. Um, our, our show has been getting tightened up and tightened up and more refined yeah. and, and, um, oh gosh, for air shows, I'd say we do 20 a year, which is on the high end. Yeah. You know, we're kind of right up there with the, um, with the blue angels and the Thunderbirds, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. uh, oh, I love watching those guys, but, um, yeah, I kind of grew up, as an air force brat, you know, my dad would take me to air shows all the time. Right. And now to be able to work in that industry is amazing where I'm like, I'm doing what I always like, I'm doing what my heroes were always doing, you know? And, yeah. and it's, um, it's a little bit of responsibility. I believe in it, you know, cause everybody's watching the skydiver guys, you know, I come and help. I have like the smallest kids help me pack parachutes at the end of the day. And we were handing out hero cards and high five and we'll run like a mile, just high five everybody, you know? Yeah. And my teammates are all, are you done yet? Miles? I'm all, nope. Got more kids to high five over here, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, yeah, I just love it. It's just so much fun, you know? And, then, yeah. uh, and that's kind of what I do now is I bounce back and forth between, um, doing Red Bull Air Force demonstration jumps all around the world and jumping off the bridge here in Idaho and coaching my own school, Miles D's Base Camp. Yeah. I mean, you love the kids. Like, you you want to grow the yeah. sport, right? Yeah. Children are the future, you know, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. I think totally. that's, I think that's a big deal. I think it's funny because you look back at your childhood, right? You saw those heroes. You connected with those people. Yep. It was a big deal for you to then be able to do that for other kids, like, that's a big deal. I, I grew up going to air shows. I, yeah. I went to air shows as a kid, nice. and like it was, it was fun. It was fun just to to see the Blue Angels. You know what I mean? Yep. And just oh yeah, see what's going on and how they do those things. So, 
one of the questions I had for you today was, sure. was uh, you flirt with death like every time if you could say it that way. You probably don't see it that way. I mitigate danger. Mitigate danger. Yeah, exactly. You can always die. A meteorite can hit us at any given moment if we're not careful. It's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, how do you shut off that part of your brain? Because because a lot of our listeners uh, are are businesses or are people that have ideas or dreams or thoughts and they want to do something, yeah. but they're just afraid to take the leap, to literally take the jump, yeah, right? Yeah, to be able to control your fear. Like if fear controls you, then you're in, you're not in control. You're yeah. just kind of getting towed around to whatever's happening. You know, oh no, go here. Oh no, go there. Oh no, go here, go there. A lot of media does that to a lot of people, you know, like, oh, this, that, and the other, and be afraid of this, be afraid of that. Yeah. That's I see that in media all the time. I can't even watch the news sometimes, but but um, yeah, it's you gotta control your fear. And basically you take what's dangerous about this. Okay, I could hit the ground really hard. So I'm gonna use my parachute. How do I use it the best? What's the best way to use this parachute? Right. And um, one thing while you're doing this dangerous sport, I always tell my students this, it's not what you do that's important. It's how good you look while you do <laughs> what you, you do that really counts. So if you are styling what you do, then you are in control and you're relaxed. Right. And, you know, the, what I learned in college, like to, to um, become a PE teacher is the four stages of motor skill development. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's what I apply to my school base jumping and to my life to like learning any new trick. And I yeah. always love learning new tricks like paramotoring. Next, it's going to be one of those hang glider weight shift trikes, dude. You know, yeah. the, the pod with the motor on the back and the there you go. hang glider and then brah, go fly that around. That's that's next on the agenda. But uh, but yeah, you got your four stages of uh, motor skill development and it's pre-control, control, utilization, and proficiency. And then pre-control, you don't even know what's going on, but you can kind of grasp what's happening. It right. looks cool. Um control you know exactly what's going on and you can see how it works and figure it out and you're able to um perform the task in a closed environment and then utilization um you can do it and chew gum at the same time basically and um right. and proficiency you can do it while performing other tasks and in a comfortable like you're not even your face isn't like yeah like in the face you're just like <laughs> I got this, you know? Yeah. And um, that's what I try to do is get myself to a proficient level at parachuting. But it's all about being current. As a pilot flies, um, you got to repeat what you're doing so that you're a current in the sport, so that you're on top of your game. So when things get thrown at you, because life always throws stuff at you, right. you're ready to just kind of dodge, dip, duck dive and dodge you know <laughs> the teeth, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's um i try to become a pro very proficient at it but i'm more so in the utilization phase all the time until yeah. i like midsummer i'll be proficient and i'll be yeah. like i can't miss the target it's like the yeah. landing target it might be a frisbee on the ground and i'll just be bullseyeing it every it. time wow. but uh yeah but yeah it's 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 how current you are as to how proficient you can be at your task so right. Yeah. Right. So, so fear mitigation, right? Yep. Danger mitigation is a process of practice for you. Yeah. And knowledge learning, like what's going on. Like we have a thing called the BFL, the base fatality list. So we mm -hmm. learn from the mistakes of others because you yeah. live long enough to make them all yourself. Yeah. So you see like, okay, if there's a car accident here, why was there a car accident here and what can we do to prevent it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if there's any kind of accident going on, how does this happen and what can we do to prevent it? You know, and you do that, you apply that to life for everything, not just parachuting, but like everything for driving, for swimming, like be careful around pillar falls. Cause like, that's where people drown, you know? And like, yeah. there's, there's certain places you need to know to avoid. And there's certain places you're a product of your environment. So if you set yourself up in a cool environment to practice your skills safely, then you can take a dangerous skill and make it safe. And this bridge here, having the prime bridge, that's our safety zone where we can take a dangerous skill, but safely practice it. And that's why people come from around the world yeah. to practice off the bridge here. Cause it's a very user friendly place to base jump. It's awesome. Yeah. Love it. I think that's, uh, I think it's, it's impressive what you do. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, overcoming the fear, I think, I think is a big deal. 
And uh, and to you, it's not a fear. So I think, I think that's it's it a, is. But I like try to like if it starts to overwhelm me, then yeah. I'll just turn around and go home because like I got something really? else going on in my mind. And or like, yeah, just life yeah, in yeah. the way. Or yeah, yeah. Because like I mean, I've I've gone out on the bridge before and everything's perfect, but I'm like not feeling it. Not that hungry today. But yeah. like most of the time, it's like you know teeth are gnashing. I'm like rah, I'm out of yeah. my way. I'm going for it. I'm base jumping. Woo, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah it's. Do just, you have any? <laughs> any scary moments? Is there any times where you were in the middle of a skydive or or you jumped off the bridge or and you, and it was a, a a moment of panic? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, wingsuiting um, is one yeah. of the most dangerous sports there is, is to go wingsuit base jumping. And I was jumping this cliff in, um, in Switzerland. It's the backside of the Jungfrau, which is like Oh my gosh, it's one of the most striking mountains, you know. Yeah. Got the Jungfrau, the Eiger, and the Monk. And the Jungfrau on the backside has got this jump called Milchstuhl that um, Uli Gegenschatz opened up. And I was jumping that with Uli and Julian Boulle and Jean Louis, the French guy that you used to see buzz past the mountains. Yeah. With the wing yeah. Suits yeah. And Saw stuff. that on like, YouTube. <laughs> yep. He's piloting now. But dude, he was like right past the skiers' heads. And I'm hanging out with these three guys, and they're all my heroes. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. And they're like, yeah, it is a little bit of a quick start, but you'd be fine. You get a good push. I'm like, okay, I get a good push. <laughs> you know, and I watch them go, and they're like, no problem. I jumped and I went head high, which you're not supposed to be head high. You're supposed to be a little head low, like a dolphin, like, yeah. And then get speed and then use that, press your leg on the wing and take off and go. And I basically stalled out my wing and then yeah. I tipped forward and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going in. And that, and going in means I'm going into the ground, like, dude, you're going to die. And mm. I'm looking at this rock that I'm about to hit and I'm thinking, okay. I got two things I can do. I can emergency pull right now and open a parachute and who knows where I'm going to land up here, probably crash in some steep hillside terrain and tumble, 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 or I can aim at it and get speed. So I just aimed straight at the rock and just dove my head right at it. And I just started sending it, sending it. And then I'm all, okay. Now I'm past the point of no return. I can't pull anymore. I'm going to press my leg wing and I would whoosh. And yeah. it kind of reminded me of my first flying dream when I was a kid. It was a Rocky Bullwinkle show. I don't know if you ever yeah. seen that where he falls out of the tree and he's like, Row! yeah, Row! and yeah. it was exactly that. And uh, and I missed that one. And then um, and then I cleared this section where there was like a little bit of a indentation in the ground, and then it came up to another bulge. And I'm coming at that bulge, and then I'm like, oh my god, I'm barely gonna make that. So once again, I just started aiming at it. And I aimed at it until I got a bunch of speed and power. And then that gave me lift to just clear that. Let out a choice word right in the middle. Like, uh -huh. yeah, I don't think I can make that. And then um, I cleared it. And then there was another one. And I cleared that. And then the last one I could have cleared by a country mile. But I dove at it anyway <laughs> just for fun. Whoa! And then when I landed, I couldn't stop about, oh, my God, I was dead. You guys. Blah, 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 blah. They're like, what is Miles talking about? It is no big deal. This jump. And then... um. Yeah, they saw my video and they go, "Oh my god, you almost died!" I'm all, "I know, that's what I was trying to tell you, man. It was close. It was, it was gnarly. I wasn't. Yeah, I'm like that was. I was above my ability level, and I just went for it. So put yourself into a good situation and have a good outcome, you know, and put yourself into an environment where it's gonna be good for you, and then good things will happen. And that's kind of my point. Is like, yeah, um, come to the bridge, get instruction. If you want to learn how to base jump and you'll go far in the sport, you know, yeah. get a, build a big solid fundamental, um, of, of your understanding and skill set before in, in like a, a, a good checklist, like mm -hmm. a pilot, when he gets yeah. into an airplane, he doesn't just jump in and turn it on and go. You can, but that you won't live forever doing that. Right. But, um, you get in there, you kick the tires, you check the fuel, check the flaps. You're like, okay, this thing's airworthy. Let's go. And, um, that's what we do. And we have a checklist for checking our gear and checking our mindset and what's our plan and what are the wins Is our plan going to work in these wins. Maybe we alter that. And you're always ready to think on your feet and like make last minute decisions as yeah. things are happening. And you're like, okay, I need to not land there anymore. I'm going to land over here now, or maybe I need to go for the water. Yeah. You know, that's what I love about here. The bridge we've got, the river is, is more like a slow flowing lake. Right. It's not like rapids yeah, it's not that's going to kill you. At all. Yeah, it's great. And it's it's nice and it's comfortable. And in the summertime, it's really nice and, and enjoyable to jump into. And 
there's always kayakers that want to like, Hey, you want to tow? I'm like, sure. Thanks. You know, and they'll tell you to the side and it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, uh, in the wingsuit, you jump off, you're heading for the rock. Uh, it takes guts to lean into it, right? That's the solution. Like, I I think like I just listened to a podcast today and the guy said, get, uh, comfortable with the inconvenient. Yeah. And the whole point was like in that moment, if you didn't stop and like lean in and, and go, I got to give it the yeah. ride because that's yeah. going to give me enough speed to be able to lift, true. right? Like, but true, like that's a that's an instinct decision of like I'm just going to go for it. Yep, you had to. I knew it. I knew yeah. if I didn't aim at that and build speed and power, I have no power and I won't clear it. So I yeah. need to get speed to be able to make that. And that's like that's like work. That's like life. That's like everything. Yeah, I was just saying like it's getting after applies it, to dude. everything. Yeah, like my boss, he would always say, "Hey, we need a shovel over here." I'm like, "I'm a shovel." Hey, we need a bobcat. I'm a bobcat. What do you, you know? And I was like, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. And that's like, to me, that's what work is, is the ability to do things that other people don't want to do. Like, okay, I uh, see people don't want to do that, but I can do that. No problem. And I'm willing to do that. And I'm going to dial that in. Oh, cool. You want to pay me to do that now? Awesome. You know? And that's kind of what I see um, work as. And like teaching base jumping as, as, um, as great as it is, it, uh, it is also work, you know, and, and it's also a little bit of a stressful job yeah. where you are responsible for the guys that you're teaching. You know what I mean? Of course they sign a waiver and it's on them, but really, I mean, come on, can you no, live with yourself yeah. if something happens to them? So like, yeah, it's, it's, you gotta like, um, really give them the key words that are going to turn on their light bulb, you know? And, and to me it's, it's, I've figured it out how to do this since 2004 when I first started doing it. And I've still evolved slightly now. At the beginning, I was evolving every day. And um, now I got a pretty good system that works. And that's the thing, too, is figure out the systems that work, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, okay, here's how you do this the easiest way so that it's smooth, you know? Yeah. And then if we want to take it to the next level, well, then we're going to have to get some elbow grease going and turn up the intensity and, and, bump up the intensity and get in there and, and push <laughs> yeah. like you said and uh and the more you push the more you grow so yeah and i got a ways to go still i want to <laughs> ask you about one of your quotes uh some people think i'm crazy but if you're not doing what you love then i think you're crazy heck yeah what are you gonna do with your life right i mean you got this life this is all you get might as well enjoy it to the maximum total maximum enjoyment of life is that's my goal you know, yeah. I went to college to be a PE teacher because I wanted to do what I love. And um, I should have, my dad told me to go learn how to fly jets. That would have been cool too. I just didn't want to do that at the time. I don't know. I was just feeling, hmm. you know, I just saw some jets going and blowing people stuff, blowing people up. And I'm like, yeah, flying is rad. That's not yeah. really what I want to do with it, you know? And then, uh, and so I just figured out that like, I just want to enjoy my life and, um, and being a teacher, help other people, you know? And, I guess that's kind of from growing up being a boy scout and Eagle scout Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, um, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, reverent, all those things, Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, that kind of helped make me who I am today a little bit is like being a scout and, um, helping other people. Because I think that by helping other people, you help yourself. If nothing else, you're just your soul, you know, and, um, and just make the world a little better place for all of us. So, you know, I think that's a good thing. But if you're, yeah. if you're not doing what you love, dude, come on, figure out, first of all, you got to figure out what it is you love. Right. And then you got to figure out how to do it, you know? And when I started learning how to base jump, I mean, it wasn't exactly legal and I was doing it. Actually it was legal because we never got really got caught. So, <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean? And we weren't hurting anybody. We were just yeah. borrowing altitude, but um, yeah, there's different ways to look at everything in life. And um you know, I'm not out to hurt anybody. I'm out to just enjoy my time on this planet as much as possible and to help other people learn and grow as well. You know, not just in base jumping, but life in general, really, you know, just have a good time. Yeah. So person standing on the edge of the bridge, uh, they look out 486 feet, as you said, 400 and, 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 uh, they don't want to jump. They're like, they, they get, they did all the training, they did everything and they're ready to go. And they look at you and they're like, I don't want to do it. What do you say to them? You hop down, dude. Let's go talk about it. 
Yeah. There's no one holding a gun to your head. Just yeah. like, dude, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But when people come to the bridge's base jump, dude, <laughs> that's not something that someone's pushing them to do. That's right. something that they're getting after. And like, they're just trying to figure out how to push things out of the way so that they can make it happen. You know what I mean? Um, I've, I haven't seen anyone do that yet. Okay. I've seen people get scared and need a breath for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take it easy. Okay. Cars are going by. They're loud. I get it. I, guys are honking right before you jump. I, I kind of like that actually. Cause it's like, whoo okay, I'm alive, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, some people freak out when that stuff happens and, and, uh, but, um, yeah, I just, um, just try to get them to relax. And if you're not enjoying that, if you're not enjoying doing this, well then stop doing it. Start yeah. doing whatever you love to do. And that's, that's what I mean by that. If you're not doing what you love doing, then figure out how you need to change your life so that you're doing what you love to do. Because that's what Frank and Bali told me. He goes like, Hey man, what do you do for work? I'm on landscape construction guy. Yeah. And he goes, do you love your job? I'm like, Whoa. I mean, I really like it. It's fun, but love is a very strong yeah. word <laughs> and I can't say love. And he goes, you need to stop doing that and start doing what you love. Cause this is what you're doing now is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. I'm like, hmm. and then like a couple weeks later he dies. So all of these things that he tell, told me are just hitting yeah. home really hard. And I'm just dwelling on all these things that he said. And, um, basically I have to thank Frank and Bali for all of this. My whole career as a base jumper. Wow. And, uh, yeah, he, you know, he told me that and I'm like, huh, well, I love skydiving. And that's when I quit my job. Like when he died, um, I took a week off of work and, you know, went to the funeral, went and did some interviews, to talk about him because he was a pretty big mm -hmm. shot dude who um, was doing some really cool things. And they were making a, um, making some a documentary thing on Frank. Yeah. And so I helped out do some interviews. And when I came back to work, my boss is all, hey, I'm going to cut your pay. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, hmm. you're the example guy. Now you took a week off work. Everybody else wants a vacation. Oh. I'm like, well, I don't really want this job that bad. Cause like, you know, it was a bunch of other things. Like we were in Reno working instead of in Tahoe where hundred degrees down yeah. there, 70 degrees up here. I didn't move to Tahoe to go work in Reno for less money, you know? And I'm like, sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to think I'm going to stick around and work. I love you, buddy, but um, I'm out. You know, <laughs> he's like, that's your prerogative. And I'll see you later. We're still friends, but I moved to the drop yeah. zone that day and lived in a tent from then. Yeah. And that just changed my life. And like listening to Frank, I just immersed myself into what I love doing. And it wasn't easy. It was hard. It was like, okay, now I'm living in a tent and I got to go to the river and clean off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and I'm cooking for myself outside. Well, we got to use the bunkhouse um, stove and stuff. That was pretty nice. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I'm packing parachutes for money. And I just, I'm like, I got stronger by packing parachutes and like hustling and going for it. And every time someone would drop a parachute on the ground, I'm going to look at that money laying down on the ground over there. I'm going to pick that up and slam that rig down, make it all perfect. That's an on-heading opening. You're, you got this and then there you go. boom. And then, uh, yeah, I call it just picking up money when you hurry, you see work on the ground, just jump in there and go for it, you know? Wow. And yeah, you're sweating and your hands hurt at the end of the day and you need lotion because your fingers are all cracked up, but, um, yeah. but your pockets are hurting too. They're like, Oh my gosh, I got paid so much today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Look at all these jump tickets just bursting out of my pants. You know, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Jump tickets. I <laughs> like know, that. I like know. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Miles, I appreciate you coming in and, and sharing your story with us. Um, what, what would you say to the person that, that, uh, that to a listener, right. That has a dream that has the idea to, to send the show off. What would you say to them? Yeah. Find out what it is you love to do. And if you don't know, just keep dreaming. And then when you find out what it is, break that thing down into parts. Cause you're not just going to go out and accomplish your goal in one grab Boom. That doesn't ever happen. Yeah. It's going to be, you need to find the stair step level of progression that you need to take because we only take one step at a time in life. So you got to take a step here, take a step there and just keep it moving, keep it moving and keep climbing the ladder until you get to the top of your goal. So, you know, figure out how to break down your, your process of breaking down how to get to where you want to be and then get after it and go there and don't stop. Might take you a year, might take you five years. But when you get there and you look back at the ride, that's the best part. So enjoy the ride. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, appreciate you. Thank you. My pleasure. Have an awesome day. We'll awesome, see you. Yeah, man. Woo!
Thanks for listening to the show today. We want to thank Miles Dasher for being here and sharing his story with us. You can find more about Miles Dasher at milesdasher.com. You can see some crazy stories and jumps and things that he's been a part of. Uh, If you want to skydive or base jump, it's a great place to start. And remember, guys, don't ever be afraid to take the leap. Don't ever be afraid to do that thing that you've been wanting to do because when you find that thing you love and you chase after it, uh, obstacles will come, but truthfully, things will work themselves out. Just keep pushing forward. Life is short. Make a ruckus.